What's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com. This is a Honda Hobbit update. This is probably number 15. We're getting close to the end. About done everything I can possibly do to this thing. So, um, I originally put a 6 volt um, lead, or it was a 6 volt uh, sealed lead acid battery. Okay, like the, find, the kind you find in UPS's. I had a 6 volt. Uh, now, I knew when I put it in there that it may not work because it did not, it would not accept the amount of amp charge that I was putting into it. And it dried it out and blew it up. Now, during this process, my phone charger circuit blew the capacitor. It was overcharged. The headlight blew out because all the current was, be was going to there because the battery had actually opened up. So all the current was going into my headlight. And then I also, my tail light was doing the same thing. So all the bulbs that were on all the time got too much power. Too much like over voltage because the battery will bring down the voltage and kind of keep it at that steady uh, um, voltage. That's the way it's designed. But since the, since the headlight, um, the headlight here, okay, it is a 6 volt and it says it's, uh, it's 15 watt. So I thought, okay, I'll just grab another bulb no big deal well you can't replace the bulb this is a sealed bulb okay it's if you look close you can see that there's a regular bulb in there um, but it's been soldered to the back side of this so in order to get the bulb out you would have to take the glass off which luckily if you look close you can see that the there's a metal edge that's rolled around the glass you see it right there all right that's the back side of this casing so in order to get this apart, you would have to literally pull that out and all the way or halfway around to get that glass out. That's going to be a pain in the butt. But if you want to just replace the light bulb, then you could do that. That would work. So the other option is buy a new light bulb, and they're like 35 bucks, and I don't have 35 bucks to spend on a headlight. So here's what I did. I thought, well, if I'm going to buy a new headlight, because this one's busted, I need a headlight, then I'm just going to go ahead and get myself an LED light. So, that's exactly what I did. I got this for $18 hey, quit on eBay. Yourself. Thanks, Rory. Okay. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> and uh, this is what I get for talking to the camera. Okay, so I bought this headlight. And uh, this is an LED light. And I thought, you know, if, if I can get this bulb out of here, and bust the glass out of the front by busting it out the back basically just the light bulb itself because this is just soldered on here look at that okay it's just soldered on there so it can be it can be desoldered um, so I thought I'm gonna buy one of these LED lights this was $18 it's 18 watts um, and 2000 lumens and it does have the high and the low beam okay I'll show you what it looks like this old lamp has the uh, ground and then the high and the low. The new bulb, or LED, which is this is what it looks like. If you want the data specs on it, this is what it looks like. 6 to 36 volt DC. All right, and it's got the, it's actually got a built-in fan, <laughs> interestingly enough. And it's got the high beam and the low beam and the ground. Now, the only thing about this, this light is this is, a DC bulb. I could not find any AC DC, uh, which I don't know why you wouldn't just stick a diode in here and sell it as both, but they didn't want to do that. So I have to do it. So what I'm going to do, uh, if I lost them oh, here, there, I'm going to take some rectifiers, all right, some just generic off the shelf rectifiers. Yeah, there you go. There is, I was trying to get you the number. All right, so off the shelf rectifiers and just place it in the line so that it rectifies it. Now real quickly, because I want to make sure that this bulb is good, let's hook it up to a battery and just make sure it comes on. But before we do that, let me show you real quick. And by the way, this comes with a, a spring uh, and then different, uh, different attachments depending on your application. Um, but the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to solder it in there. And then there's a screw on the side right here where you can just slip it off. So that's probably what I'm going to end up doing, just soldering it. Um, there is just enough room inside there to get this back this back unit in there. So no problem. Uh, so basically, um, I'm just going to desolder this. 
and solder this little coupling which comes off uh, using this screw. I left my tools outside. We take off this Phillips and you can just pull that off. So this will slide in and out no problem. Then if I need to be concerned about the depth to get the beam correct, then I can I can you know I can make an adjustment if I need to with that screw. Okay, so that's the plan. Uh, I think that'll be feasible. So I wanted to like give you guys an actual demonstration as I do this um, because I wanted to make sure uh, that if you guys had to do this or this may be a tutorial video. So let's go ahead and just make sure this thing works. And I need to make sure I know which one's the low beam and which one's the high beam. So let's connect the ground to here. Oh, yes, sir. Holy crap. Okay, so the the low beam is the two bottom lights, which is what I thought. And then the high beam is the... Oh, it's all three. Perfect. So I don't actually have to be concerned about how I hook this up. That is bright. Okay, so that's currently what my what my options are here. I'm going to actually desolder this and put this in there, and I'm going to put a uh, bridge rectifier in between the lines here. So I'll probably just solder these to these. Uh, now I'm putting a full wave bridge rectifier in here. Um, that'll give me all the voltage that I need. I'm just going to have to make sure that it's going to work properly. So actually, I'm going to go out and hook it up to the bike and let's go find out if it works before I go through modifying this. Alright, so I've currently just got some uh, alligator clips jumpered onto my full wave bridge rectifier. And I am going to hook up the ground to one side of the rectifier. And we'll just hook up the low beam for now. Alright, and then on the output... Oh, I gotta switch these around. Okay, so a couple of things here. I may put uh, a DC cap in here to let it charge up and smooth out that flickering that you see. Uh, the second thing is, is no matter if the high beam or the low beam is on, I still get both outputs. So I'm going to basically need to figure out how to solve that problem. Um, there's got to be an easy solution, but I'll have to look at the schematic and see how it's connected. But basically what happens is, if you've got, DC, if you've got this half the rectification going, which is the, the ground basically, but since it's AC, it's half your sine wave. Um, and this is a three-phase system, I'm sure. So, or at least a two-phase, I know. I think it's three-phase. And so, I'm going to need to figure out a way to isolate the high beam ground from the the low beam ground okay I'll check back in later only one filament in there but we need to see what voltage it is. Alright, so the backlight bulb will be easy. We can make an LED retrofit, but I'll see if I can find one. What's up, everybody? So, I started this video like two weeks ago or something. 
I have had bad luck after bad luck after bad luck. So I'm going to explain to you what I did really quickly and then the actual answer to my issue temporarily. Uh, so here's what happened. I hooked up this uh, two bridge rectifiers to the output of the AC side. Okay, so the AC coming out of the... Um, Oh, well, at first I had to find a schematic that was accurate. And once I did, I found out the coil in the alternator, um, what happens is it comes out, it goes to the output, then it goes through the light, and then back to ground. But on the ground side, there's actually a negative part of the AC, and on the positive side here, there's a positive part of the AC because of how the coil is connected in the alternator. Now, I took the, the light here that I showed you guys, right? And I took that light and I came out here with a, with a bridge rectifier that looks something like this. And I hooked it up. And that was it. I hooked it up, tested it, and I could not get the high and the low, alright, the high and the low here. I could not get the high and the low to work separately. So I couldn't figure out what the deal was and I thought, okay, they must be tied together somehow. So I'll briefly describe to you how it is. There's a AC coming out right here. It goes through the switch, and then you can pick high or low. All right, and that's how this works. And you got two wires. One goes to high, and one goes to low. That's the functionality. Now, I thought you could just put a bridge rectifier on the output of this, and a bridge rectifier on the output of this, tie them both to ground, so that's your AC side. Then the DC side goes to your lamp. That didn't work. So I thought, okay, um, I'll do it separately. And the conclusion I came up with, with a, after a bunch of testing, was I built a circuit, okay, and the circuit took the AC bridge, rectified it, okay, the, the total input power, rectified it through a rectifier like this. Um, it rectified it, and then it brought it through uh, and powered the low side of the light. Then the high side of the light, I connected to a 5-volt regulator and isolated that completely with a relay. So the relay just allowed the already rectified uh, DC to go through the coil and back into the positive of the light, which was the high beam. <laughs> okay. Uh, the problem was I could not get I could not get five volt potential. I could only get like four and a half. So I was having issues. So I went ahead and played with it for quite some time, and I ended up doing this to my circuit. Uh, I'll show you a diagram of that circuit, and you can see how it functions. But this is what's left of the circuit after I played with it for a while and figured out it's just not going to work so I thought forget it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook a bridge rectifier up from the output of the generator to the ground of the bike which would give me about 8 volts output It'd actually give me about 10 volts output peak to peak uh, when, when you rectify it, it would actually boost it a small bit because you're looking at the peak output on that DC. And I'll just hook that straight to a bridge rectifier, okay? Uh, well, yeah, I'll tell you the story and then I'll tell you the other one. So I'll hook that directly, directly to a bridge rectifier and then, um, then I'll have pure DC going into my switch and then back out. And so I can just hook up the ground potential and my positive and negative DC okay that makes sense to you so kinda confusing but what happened when I hooked up my bridge rectifiers when I was testing this is that there's a fan in this light uh, in the fan inside this light it burned up it quit working it was literally smoking it smoked the driver chip inside the fan so I'm thinking okay something's not right at all so that's when I decided to build this circuit I fixed the fan, I built this circuit because I'm thinking something's really messed up. So I built the circuit with using one of these bridge rectifiers and I put a heat sink on one of these rectifiers because these are uh, 4 amp rectifiers and it was pulling about, uh, it's pulling over 2 amps and it was getting fairly hot. So I thought, okay, no problem. Uh, and I ran like that for about a week and a half with this circuit but this circuit did not work on the high beam I had low beams the whole time no problems everything ran fine uh, it worked great so I'm like okay what am I gonna do now so what I did is uh, I'm gonna hook up this bridge rectifier directly to it like I just described run it right into that light no problem there's a controlling circuit okay right here that's inside that light well that worked great for about one drive 
and then the circuit just quit working. The light quit working altogether. Uh, one of the lights actually quit working, and so I thought, okay, we'll take it apart and look at it. I played with it for a while. I had I just had so many issues, so I'm like, okay. Uh, I it ended up burning up the driver circuit if it will focus. It ended up burning up the driver circuit. Okay. And as you can see, I really don't understand what happened to the focus on this camera. As you can see, it completely smoked it. There's three individual driver chips with three individual inductors that can that go to the lights, and this is a pulse frequency output. Because, uh, from my understanding, you don't want to directly run those high output LEDs at a constant current. You want to uh, pulse it. So that's what I did um, using this controller. Well, it burned up. Just everything went to pots, and I honestly, truly think that the the second diode that I added on here, when I redid this. To add just bridge rectifiers only, I think I uh, I added one of the diodes, the bridge rectifiers that I had used originally, which I think is what ruined my fan. Guess what? Burned the controller up. I think that's what happened. So my whole entire problem is this one bridge rectifier that I believe has a, a short in it. This is a used piece of electronics that I took out of something else, and I'm uh, pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, I have not tested this, but I think that's what it is. Whew, a lot of explanation for an answer, but here's what my conclusion is. Here's what I'm going to do. This, these LEDs, okay, with nothing left in here, burned everything up. This is a diode. So it is a one-way rectification uh, diode. And I thought, all right, if I got an AC signal, I'll just hook up the diode, this light, to my power source. Um, and then do some math and figure out how, many, how much current I should get through this. And because it's AC, it's pulsing it. So I figured instead of, it's not driving it directly DC, so instead of using like a bridge rectifier and then driving this directly and maybe burning something up, I thought if I just use the AC directly into this, it's fast enough that it won't flicker and it should work. So I grabbed me some power resistors, did some calculations, I did some bench tests and I found out that these I believe these may hold up to 750 milliamps a piece. Um, according to my calculations, that's about right. Now, during my tests on the bench, I decided I'm not going to go past 400 milliamps uh, because it was plenty bright and the current was this. You know, everything was getting pretty warm. Um, granted, this whole thing gets warm when it was running originally, but I think around 400 milliamps is good. So I'm currently getting somewhere around 8 volts out of this system AC and then through the, uh, di the diode here and through my resistors I want to do a voltage drop across my resistors to get the right amount of current drop across these. Now there are, and this thing ain't going to focus is it, there are individual LEDs inside of here. All right, and there are two in two across the, the leads input, and there are ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so there's two LEDs individually in series, and seven of those pairs in parallel. All right, and that gives you your total amount. So a white LED is approximately 3.3 volts. Um, so I calculated everything at six volts DC is what I'm going to be doing my forward um, voltage drop current at 400 milliamps that brings me to somewhere around uh, 10 ohms or so to get the right amount of everything I want now the only thing I could find in a power resistor was this 39 ohm resistor and so I've got three of them in uh, parallel and that gives me right at 13 ohms just above I'm, I'm really downsizing everything I could push the, the limit of this light but I'm afraid to burn it up so I'm just going everything lower and see how it works and then if I think I need more if I can add more but I I think it'll be fine so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to hook up these resistors on the output side of the alternator okay that's going to run through uh, uh, two of the LEDs which is low beam all right out of the regular low beam and back to the uh, ground then the high beam is going to go through uh, the high beam LED 
and back to ground. And so if I run all three lights, this is enough wattage. It's only going to be like, uh, like uh, three, uh, somewhere around three watts, something like that. And these are five watts a piece, and I've got three in, uh, in uh, parallel. So I've really got 15 watts that I can run here. So these should not get hot at all. Now, I'm not concerned about the cooling fan. I'm going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to hook this whole thing up. And I'm going to show you how it works. And I'm literally purely using the direct AC to run these LED lights because of all the problems that I've had. Now I did order another light and I'll be trying this again with good bridge rectifiers but I'm gonna let this sucker run until it doesn't run anymore if if it holds true and people can use this method if they'd like just ditch the DC electronics which is this part just ditch this whole thing calculate the resistance that you need for the AC that you're using on your bike and you're done so that's it I'll show you what I'm done Woo! a lot of talking that's what you get stuff happens that's not uh, not good <laughs>
I'm going to say they're only 75% lit because I'm only running at about 300 milliamps and I know I can run up to 400 easy and I believe these run at actually at like 7500 milliamps but from my testing 400 milliamps was plenty 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 bright at its 6 volts so that's what I calculated my judgments off of alright peace out Whew, it's hot today it's about to get cool peace It doesn't actually flicker that bad, that's the frame rate of my camera.